Before we get into today's episode, I just wanna let you guys know that I am doing my limited run Pyramid Plushie with Makeship. It is, like I said, limited run, so it's only here for a few weeks. You can pre-order it now at makeship.com. Go to campaigns, look for active campaigns, it's me. Link is also in the description. So quick, easy access. This year's Pyramid Plushie has got cute little purple sweater, big pyramid head, beautiful eye, and this year we've got a 3D teacup. Now, you guys know the deal. Once the pre-order ends, that's it. These are never going to be sold again. So make sure to get one while you can. Again, link is in the description box or just go to makeshift.com and go to active campaigns to find my plushie. We know the vitamin and supplement industry is questionable, but what about pet vitamins? Are vitamin supplements for dogs and cats any different or are perhaps they more harmful leading owners to neglect their pet's well-being in favor of giving them some herbs and spices? Today, we'll talk about a few pet vitamin and supplement companies, rumors of kickback schemes, unproven science, and many wild claims. This episode has everything you're used to seeing from Multi-Level Monday with just a few furry faces attached. Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Illuminati and today we're going to talk about a couple of pet focused MLMs and the company NuVet. However, NuVet has only been accused of shady activity. It isn't a confirmed scam or an MLM. Still, as NuVet is one of the first and largest players in this pet vitamin world, it only seemed right to include them. Plus, Nivetica and Pawtree offer slightly different products that make a wide range of health claims between the two of them. Anyway, we've got quite a bit to get into, so let's get started. We'll start with NuVet, as they were founded back in 1997. According to president and founder Blake Kirschbaum, it all began when his Newfoundland hound Elvis started acting strangely. Blake claims that medications and diet changes were not helping, so he began developing vitamins for Elvis instead. After eight years of developing products under the name NuVet Labs, Blake and his team of scientific, medical, and pet industry professionals created an effective nutritional supplement. Blake claims they tested these products in an independent laboratory and after incredible results, released their product into the world. Firstly, if Elvis was acting differently or not getting the nutrients he needed even after a couple changes to his diet, then I'd be curious to know if there was some sort of chronic illness happening there. According to the VCA, under normal circumstances, dogs can meet their nutritional needs by eating a combination of plant and animal foods. We've seen similar statements made about humans in our previous supplements episode. As long as you're eating right and taking care of your body, then vitamins and mineral deficiencies shouldn't be a problem. Unless, of course, there are underlying causes for that. Therefore, if Elvis had these issues after Blake tried everything else, was there a root cause that Blake wasn't disclosing or just didn't know? The implication that dogs as a whole need vitamins regardless of what they're being fed directly conflicts with the VCA. Secondly, what about that study? If Blake was pleasantly surprised by it and findings revealed that NuVet products are genuinely effective, why would he not release that? It isn't shown on their website anywhere and I haven't actually been able to find it. So if the study does exist, it seems strange that he wouldn't proudly display it on his website. I mean, he clearly does that with anecdotal evidence such as testimonials, but I would think if you had this amazing study with all of these proofs and results, you would wanna post that, right? In addition, NuVet claims that their products are safe and that though the FDA doesn't regulate vitamins and supplements, they're manufactured in an FDA registered pharmaceutical laboratory. Their products range from shampoos to ear cleaners to immune system builders. One bottle of hip and joint support wafers costs $55 and has 180 wafers inside. That can last you the better part of a year if you have one dog under 10 pounds or for one dog under 100 pounds, that'll last under two months. For some owners, this cost is absolutely worth it. Some testimonials claim that they saw increased vigor in their dogs after starting them on NuVets. One owner says that her dog was having skin issues until they began using the supplemental wafer products and several owners say they have happier, healthier dogs and cats. I'm genuinely relieved that in most of the testimonials, owners mentioned that they are still taking their pets to the vet, usually in the context of stating that their vet gives them a healthy report. However, there are some reviews on websites like SiteJabber that are a bit suspicious at best and concerning at worst. One of them reads, 
We've been using Nuvet Plus since our first yellow lab, Satchmo was diagnosed with terminal bone and lung cancer in 2012 and decided we needed to up the ante on the health of our dogs. After researching wellness supplements, we discovered Nuvet Plus and decided that product offered the purity and quality we expected for our other two labs, Scarlett and Hubert. They both had hip and spine issues and we wanted to offer them the best quality of life and most comfort possible. After introducing them to Nuvet Plus, they both had improved mobility and our vet commented on improvements with their overall physicals. Both Scarlett and Hubert lived to be 15 years old and I believe Nuvet Plus attributed to their longevity, comfort, and good health. I trust their product to supplement where diet alone falls short. No mention of cancer treatment or vet recommendation is in the review and in the wording, my opinion implies that NuVet is a proven treatment. There are multiple other reviews that read similarly, stating that NuVet cleared their dog's skin issues or kept them from needing surgery. There are negative reviews surrounding NuVet's customer service and refund policies, but largely speaking, reviews are positive. If your vet recommends your pet needs a specific supplement or medication, by all means, dogs have different needs. It's the posts that claim that they were following a breeder's advice that are just a bit troubling to me, though we will talk about this brand and breeders more in just a moment. For some brief clarification, I also saw a review that claims NuVet used shark cartilage, and as some sharks are endangered and generally overhunted, you shouldn't support them because of that. Opinion though, of course. However, NuVet apparently obtains its cartilage from a renewable fishing industry off the coast of New Zealand and from non-endangered species. While shark cartilage has historically been accompanied with unsubstantiated efficacy claims according to the FTC, and I do believe it's questionable for NuVet to call this ingredient clinically proven at the time, I also can't accuse them of using endangered sharks for their ingredients either because I can't prove it. So what does the medical community think of these supplements? I was able to find a blog called SkepVet written by a practicing veterinarian that created the site to discourage medicine that isn't proven to be safe, effective, and has potential for harm. One of their articles from 2012 is entitled, NuVet Supplement Equals Same Old Snake Oil, which as you can imagine, doesn't bode well for NuVet. According to SkepVet, NuVet supplements are a kitchen sink of vitamins, minerals, herbs, and other ingredients. While they may have shown some interesting properties in test tubes and mice, they are not scientifically proven to treat or prevent disease in dogs. Again, this doesn't necessarily mean these supplements are unsafe, but it means they're almost a complete unknown for dogs, whereas NuVet is advertised as treating everything from Addison's disease and allergies to fleas, hotspots, infections, mange, and seizures. SkeptVet also confirms that as of 2012, the study NuVet conducted that supports them is unpublished, which means we have no way of verifying its results whatsoever. The article reframes NuVet's story as this. Eight years of effort dedicated to solving the root causes of all disease finally vindicated by an unpublished test in several dogs and cats. Wow. Below this statement, SkeptVet questions the efficacy of many NuVet ingredients with scientific studies linked to each one. For example, the ingredient blue-green algae doesn't have any reliable evidence behind it to support NuVet's claims. And there are some species of blue-green that can actually be highly toxic to dogs. In addition, another ingredient, papain, has some evidence in helping shingles and sore throats in humans, but there's no reason to believe it serves as a digestive enzyme as NuVet has claimed. SkeptVet finishes the list with saying this, And finally, as well as most important, there appears to be absolutely no published research evidence of any kind evaluating the safety of purported benefits of this product. That is not a good sign. Later they add, while I have no reason to doubt the sincerity of the manufacturer of this product, I believe it is unethical to sell a product with no research establishing the safety or efficacy of the product for any disease and with little to no research, even into the safety and efficacy of its constituents. NuVet has made a lot of health claims, but as far as this veterinarian can tell, they don't have the grounds to do so. And I feel as though with a lot of MLMs and supplement companies, they will do something like this. If they find one study about a natural ingredient helping with something as small as a stomach ache, it can be blown out of proportion and into science shows this ingredient is helpful. Therefore, we're recommending it as a cure for XYZ. Because this industry is so underregulated, claims like these are all too common. And even when they're not overtly stated, they're often implied. Again, we've seen this many, many times before. This is nothing new, but it's really infuriating when, you know, we're totally fine with doing this to people, but now we're even doing this to our own pets and they can't stand up for themselves. 
They rely on their owners to take proper care of them. And now we might have mis many misinformed owners running around giving their pets ingredients to things that they either don't need or things that could even potentially harm them, which that's a little scary. SkepVet is not the only one to challenge NewVet's claims. The website SBM or Science-Based Medicine is owned and operated by New England Skeptical Society, a nonprofit dedicated to science and critical thinking. They state that SkeptVet is a credible source of information, but finding other reliable sources surrounding this topic can be difficult. It probably doesn't help that so little is known about pet supplements to begin with. One of SBM's articles written by Scott Guevara in 2014 questions both NuVet's products and their regulation. According to Scott, if human supplements are the wild west of regulation, then pet supplements are an order of magnitude worse. There are effectively no limits on claims, less evidence to evaluate breeders that may lack science literacy and a system that seems to place anecdotal evidence above all else. Some of the ingredients NuVet has used are actually clinically useless in both pets and humans. And in one scathing remark, Scott's writes that he has seen more sophisticated science at public school science fairs than the science that NuVet uses to promote its products. Their all cause of disease is a lack of dietary antioxidants wavers into the sort of rhetoric we've seen from Jilly Juice and the Miracle Mineral Supplement MMS supporters. There's far more than one cause of all illnesses. So according to Scott, for NuVet to act as if supplements will prevent everything from kidney disease to cancer to epilepsy, it's irresponsible at best. Apparently, so many people questioned if NuVet was a scam that at the time of Scott writing this, NuVet had a webpage titled, NuVet is not a scam. The fact that they felt the need for this page should be telling. Though NuVet may have entered into pet health and wellness scenes early, it didn't take long for the competition to also arrive. Two years ago, the pet supplement industry was estimated to be worth about $636 million. And just like the supplement industry for humans, it's valuable, competitive, and widely unregulated. In 2014, Roger Morgan founded Pawtree, an MLM for pets. Roger does have a history in the pet care industry, so at least he does have some experience, even if I seriously question his business model choice. During the Our Story video on their About Us page, Roger explains that many pet parents can be overwhelmed trying to determine what's best for their cat or dog. And after you input their age, weight, activity level, and other general information into Pawtree's pet profile, you'll get a customized nutrition plan for your pet. This concept has gotten more and more traction in recent years. Other companies such as Spot and Tango have launched their brand Unkibble, which offers fresh dog food customized for your pet and shipped to your home. The Farmer's Dog, Evermore Pet Food, Ollie, Nom Nom are all just of a few others that are doing this too. Whether or not you like these meal plans is up to you, your vet and your dog, obviously. However, aside from meal plans, there are two other interesting products that Pawtree sells. The first seems relatively harmless. It's a pet seasoning that allows a dog's food to taste different, so they're not eating the same thing every night. Paw pairings, as Pawtree calls it, is designed to combat boredom, inspire picky eaters, or encourage ill pets to eat. Since debuting in 2018, this has become one of their flagship products and seems generally well-received. However, in the health and wellness portion of their website, there's another kind of product they promote, CBD chews for your dog. And first and foremost, no, Pawtree is not advertising these as a way to get your pet high as they don't actually contain any THC. That would be far more problematic. Instead, the trouble I have with Pawtree's advertising is actually in their claims. They seem to present their CBD products as a scientifically proven treatment when that isn't actually the case. For example, beneath their Chillax CBD product, they write that one in three dogs and cats show signs of anxiousness. Some anxiousness may be normal, but for those that have it to an uncontrollable extent, they need help calming down. They add, this veterinarian developed formula helps relieve stress and tension, ease travel, grooming, and separation anxiety, and soothe fear from storms and fireworks. This comprehensive formula contains broad spectrum hemp oil, hemp seed oil, hemp seed powder, chamomile, passionflower, and ginger, which help to keep pets calm during stressful times. They make similar statements in other CBD products, such as Aches Away and CBD Mega. This isn't to say that CBD can't help your pet, but there are still a lot of things we just don't know about it. One CNET article featuring a leading veterinarian cannabis researcher explains the research we have at our disposal, saying it's not sufficient to put too much stock in CBD just yet. Back in 2012, when Colorado legalized recreational marijuana, veterinarian Stephanie McGrath claims that she started getting multiple calls from pet owners wondering if marijuana was safe for dogs and cats. 
McGrath is an assistant professor of neurology at Colorado State University College of Veterinary and Medicine and Biomedical Sciences. So she began researching the topic and realized that there was essentially no real good scientific literature in our human world, let alone the veterinary research world. The CBD pet care market is on track to reach over $125 million next year. So for it to be so unknown and under-researched yet so valuable, well, I think you can see where the problems would start to arise. One of McGrath's first studies analyzed how a capsule, oil, and cream affect the way CBD moves through the body of a healthy dog. She found that oil reaches the highest concentration in the blood, the capsule performs well, and the cream method performs too inconsistently to draw any conclusions. This is somewhat similar to humans, but once again, even promising research is barely five years old, if that. One 2018 study found that CBD can potentially help increase comfort in dogs with osteoarthritis, and another 2019 study by McGrath shows that it may help reduce a number of seizures in epileptic dogs. However, once again, these were small and preliminary studies. McGrath explains, all we've basically done is give this drug to these dogs and said, okay, this is what we're seeing. But whether or not the blood levels achieved are adequate enough to treat certain diseases, we don't yet know. Because these studies are still so recent, we're always getting new information too. One 2017 report from the World Health Organization said that CBD in its pure state appears safe for animals. Then in 2018, more canine studies revealed that there is an increase in ALP, the liver enzyme during CBD treatment. In other words, if a dog is already taking a medication metabolized by the liver or has known liver issues, this could be dangerous. We don't know how CBD would affect that enough to deem it safe. The CBD market for dogs is a massive unknown. The studies are new, leading experts are uncertain, and on a more important note, the market isn't well regulated. Similar to human vitamin and supplement research, there's no government regulation. There are some organizations out there like the National Animal Supplement Council that grant pet supplement manufacturers the seal of approval if they meet a set list of requirements, but that's kind of it. The NASC has these requirements readily available on their website if you want to take a look, but it includes things like warning labels, having a quality control manual in place, and an adverse event reporting complaint system. A company must also pass an independent third-party audit every two years to gain the seal of approval. While this does sound helpful for setting some ground rules, there's nothing under the SAC's quality seal page about requiring companies to only sell scientifically proven products. It also doesn't have any regulations or anything to say that they must refrain from making unfounded health claims either. For full transparency's sake, yes, Pawtree has actually gotten the NASC seal of approval. It's fantastic that there is some sort of watchdog program out there, but again, with so little data supporting everything and these studies being new, I just, it's just really unknown. But as we said, the market is growing for pet wellness and Pawtree wasn't the only MLM to take note of this. Nevetica was also founded in 2018 by Dr. Lance London after his 17-year-old dog Rocky had a stroke. London was advised to put Rocky down, but he adopted the raw food diet and nutraceuticals for his pet instead. Rocky did seem to at least make a partial recovery before passing away two years later. Unfortunately, under the science portion of the About Us page, there aren't any studies mentioned or any information, whereas there's plenty of ways to read more about their love of animals and business opportunities. Aside from shampoos and hygiene kits, they also sell CBD oil, hip and joint supplements, and things of that nature. Though there's far less said about this MLM, there is a private Facebook group devoted entirely to Nevetica testimonies. They have 854 members in the group as of writing this. And before we continue on to talk even more about how the pet supplement industry is leading to more problems, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. New year, new food. It's time for changing habits. And whether you're saving money with less takeout, learning how to cook, or getting healthy, HelloFresh can help you with all of that and more. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients to your door, including farm fresh produce that arrives within a week. So you get convenience without skimping on quality. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including veggie, calorie smart, family friendly, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety for everyone. They've got recipes like hibachi, sweet soy, bravo, 
at steak and shrimp that bring restaurant quality meals right to your kitchen and their white cheddar Wonder Burgers make you wonder why you'd ever buy takeout. And something that I think is massively understated about HelloFresh is their quick prep meals that are ready in 10 to 20 minutes. And these are like flatbread sandwiches, like everything is also pre-portioned, fresh and ready to go. So go to hellofresh.com slash MLM16 and use code MLM16 for up to 16 meals and three free gifts. That's up to 16 free meals and three free gifts at hellofresh.com slash MLM16 with code MLM16. This episode is also sponsored by Felix Gray. And that's because a lot of us spend a large part of our days staring at screens and all of that. And it means we're exposed to blue light, which can mess with your sleep and even cause headaches. And that's why five years ago, Felix Gray set out on a mission to help people create a better relationship with their technology. Felix Gray glasses filter 15 times more blue light than other glasses. Plus they offer non-prescription and prescription lenses too. I have a pair of Volta frames in black and I've been using them since I've got them for a couple months now. And I can tell you it's been really nice to have. Whether you're heading back to the office, back to school or back to whatever, you can count on Felix Gray. Visit felixgrayglasses.com slash MLM and check them out now. felixgrayglasses.com slash MLM. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com. Felix Gray also offers free shipping, free returns, and free exchanges. So make sure you go to felixgrayglasses.com slash MLM to try them out for yourself today. Needless to say, the pet supplement industry has been exploding. Up until this point in the episode, we've seen that there's little evidence to prove these supplements work and there's just a general lack of regulation. However, these pet supplements aren't just unproven, but they can also be harmful too. Back in 2007, the FDA asked an expert panel to look into three popular pet supplements, lutein, evening primrose oil, and garlic. However, the group couldn't agree on a safe upper limit due to the limited safety data on dietary supplements for animals. Consumer Lab also tested half a dozen different joint supplements for dogs, cats, and horses, and found that not only did four of them lack the ingredients promised on the label, but they contained high amounts of lead too. Testing of 87 brands revealed that 25% of them fell short of what they promised. Mark Blumenthal of the American Botanical Council stated, There is and always has been a quality problem, although many companies do a good job. You can't ask a dog or cat to give you a subjective impression of how they're feeling after taking a product for several days. They can't say on a scale of one to five, I feel better or worse. Instead, he suggests that these supplements are more for an owner than a pet, meant to make them feel better, to believe they're helping. Unfortunately, some owners could be doing the opposite. A 2017 article from Cummings Veterinary and Medical Center at Tufts University restates some of what we already know. If an animal is eating a healthy diet, they shouldn't need supplements in the first place. Therefore, adding in more vitamins when your pet has a balanced diet can actually be quite damaging. The site Vetricin elaborates and says that too much vitamin A can cause stiffness and it can make it hard for dogs to move its neck entirely. Too much vitamin D can lead to kidney failure and even death. Too much glucosamine and chondroitin, the ingredients we see in joint supplements, can cause multi-organ dysfunction syndrome. The former glucosamine has actually been reported as a top poison for dogs in recent years due to the potential for overdosing. A 2015 study from the Canadian Veterinarian School evaluated one case where a five-year-old Bernese Mountain Dog ingested 200 nutritional joint supplement tablets. Tragically, the dog did get quite sick and was euthanized. Of course, this was after eating 200 tablets, not a recommended dosage, obviously, and this was an extreme case. Within the study itself, though, it's mentioned that multiple cases of liver failure have been associated with joint supplement overdosage, and recent literature in human and veterinary medicine suggests that joint supplements with glucosamine can result in liver damage. It takes a lot for an overdose to occur. And as SkeptVet suggests, there's little evidence glucosamine is well absorbed and helps a dog's joints in the first place. There are experts that disagree about the efficacy, so take that as you will. But either way, that's like, that's kind of the information we have to go off right now. And it is quite limited, unfortunately. In addition to all of this, there's been some questionable activity behind the scenes at NuVet too. We'll start with the matter of NuVet partnering with charities. On their website, NuVet has an entire portion devoted to the charities they support and give back to. An article from EIN Presswire talks at length about their relationship with one charity in particular named SAFE, or Saving Animals from Euthanasia, located in Thousand Oaks, California. 
On the surface, this sounds like a fantastic cause. And after cursory searches of a few of the charities Nuvet partners with, they seem to support some well-respected nonprofits. But then there are some organizations like the WCA, which is the official AKC parent club representing the Weimariner breed in the US. The AKC or the American Kennel Club has done so much harm that they've actually already earned their own episodes separately before. So any charity or organization that partners with them will automatically look a bit questionable to me. Maybe NuVet isn't aware of AKC's history or the WCA's partnership with them, but seeing as all this information is readily available and very easily found, it does make me question who they support. While many of the charities seem to be too small to have a report on Charity Navigator, some have negative reviews on Yelp, Google, or glowing ones on Facebook. NuVet can't know or be held accountable for what happens behind the scenes of these charities, but it's the financial support of an organization tied to the AKC that gives me pause. You get that? gives me pause and it's a pet episode. I was proud of myself. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue now. However, far worse than that are the allegations that NuVet is running a kickback scheme with breeders. Now, this has floated around the internet for quite some time and it came up again last year when founder and owner of NuVet, Kirschbaum, purchased a $35 million home. And it, that's $35 million. One article at the time read, There's also a dark side to NuVet, if the internet is to be believed. The company has received particularly harsh criticism for its Herbalife-like business practices, which resemble a pyramid scheme and include close dealings with dog breeders. When a dog or puppy is sold by a breeder to a customer, the breeder is heavily incentivized to push NuVet vitamins on that customer, often whether the pet requires it or not. And when the customer purchases NuVet products via a breeder's code, the breeder receives a hefty chunk of manufacturer kickbacks, securing a very friendly business relationship with NuVet to be continued indefinitely. Is the internet really to be believed though? Definitely not without more proof. But as it turns out, Scott Gavura from Science Based Medicine has made some claims in his article. According to Scott, a dog owner slash skeptic of NuVet reached out to him. This dog owner claimed that his breeder said his new dog came with a health guarantee with the condition that he purchased NuVet for several years. Said dog owner had to phone in his order and quote a specific breeder number to confirm he was purchasing the product. I also found a comment under SkeptVet's article from a person claiming to be a German Shepherd breeder and a supporter of NuVet. They commented that they do in fact recommend these products to their puppy buyers, but don't require them in a contract. They wrote, "'Believe me, the few cents the breeders get back from this company is in no way responsible for our recommendations.'" Now, while I would love to believe this user named German Lover, I assume they mean German Shepherds and not just Germans the nationality. Maybe they do, I don't know. But anyway, I'm not entirely convinced that those few cents are really only pennies. Maybe to this breeder, that's the case. Maybe there's no money at all and these posts are fraudulent. We genuinely cannot know for sure. However, there are multiple instances of this same accusation cropping up. Therefore, it feels impossible to ignore. Some websites such as Pets and More point out that veterinarians have also recommended products like Hill's Prescription Diet and Hill's Science Diet that have been recalled by the FDA at various points in time. The company that manufactures Hill Science and Prescription Diet brands also spends hundreds of thousands of dollars every year funding veterinarian colleges, leading to some questioning if vets can even truly give unbiased nutrition advice in the first place. The topic of vets and the commercial pet food industry is another topic altogether, but multiple dog forum users claim that kickbacks are perfectly normal and other companies such as Life's Abundance also use them. And Life's Abundance is yet another pet MLM selling supplements and fish oil for pets. Conveniently, their income disclosure is available directly on their opportunity page, and it shows the realities of working for a company like this. Barely 3% of their workforce earns a five-figure salary. Their income disclosure is a bit difficult to decipher, but it shows, like with any MLM we've discussed, how unlikely you are to earn money with this business model. It's designed to benefit those at the top and those at the top only. Naturally, aside from questionable health claims, products, and alleged schemes, this industry is also rife with income claims, at least from Pawtree anyway. Tina or Truth in Advertising compiled a list of their claims in 2018. While many of them have been taken down since that time, the vast majority are actually still up. One is from the Pawtree website itself, where they explain how their pet pros can earn $1,000 in bonuses alone within just a few months. Their video states, what can you do with an extra income? Take that vacation, pay off some credit cards, or maybe become your own boss and leave that nine to five grind. Take that step towards financial freedom and become a pet pro today. And honestly, 
who wouldn't want some extra income, right? Like if someone was like, hey, would you wanna do this easy gig and earn a second income? I don't know many people, at least Americans that would say no, like we need it, we're hurting. Obviously, everyone would love extra money. So asking these types of questions is just weird, but it's something that we've seen with multiple MLMs in the past. And I of course want to mention that, you know, the extra thousand dollars, it's not that simple. They neglect to mention the time, effort, and upfront costs involved in even starting your little shenanigans with this MLM. It's not free money for talking about how much you love dog or cat food. Now, likely because of the rapid growth within this industry, even wellness MLMs that we've already discussed previously have begun branching out into pet healthcare products. Young Living, for example, also sells essential oils for your pets and dental shoes made with essential oils in them, which last time I checked, I believe essential oils are toxic to pets. Uh, So I'm hoping they did something different to their formulations because that's bad. Meloluca, another wellness company we've talked about, has also sold nutritional supplements for dogs, although I found this product on Amazon, not on their own website. Even Monate, the hair care company that's notorious for making women's hair fall out, is now selling products for dogs. So if you ever needed to stop taking your dog to the vet, just uh, start washing them with Monate and uh, there'll be a little naked mole rat running around soon enough. Clearly, the pet industry is booming. People adore their pets and want the best for them, which can unfortunately make owners vulnerable to scams. Please, if you truly want to do right by your dog, then make sure you are doing your research into the products you're giving your dog. Because remember, your dog can't really give you direct feedback. Your dog can't really go, hey, that hurts me. They're just gonna do it because they love you and they trust you. Speak to a veterinarian, I don't know, just get multiple opinions on a product. I'm sure many of these pet owners are well-intentioned. I I don't really think there's pet owners that are trying to give their dog vitamins and be like, oh yeah, I hope this fucking kills Sophie. Like, I think they genuinely are just trying to help their dogs and cats and pets live their best lives. But good intentions can't compensate for a lack of evidence. And so even though you're trying your best, that doesn't mean that that product is what's best for your pet. Aside from the MLM aspect, where obviously anyone who is gonna try and sell these shenanigans are not gonna make money, there is also lives on the line. Sometimes we have human lives on the line, and today it is our furry friends' lives on the line with these particular sets of companies. All I'm asking is just to be wary. Take what I say with a grain of salt. You can totally ignore me. If you use their products, love the products, go off, do you. I'm not gonna fight you. I'm never gonna fight anybody. Just like I get all these little trolls on like the recent Chick-fil-A episode and and they're like, oh, I'm eating Chick-fil-A and homophobia tastes so good. And I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna stop you. You're the one showing those colors to the world, not me. So you do you. I'm coming from this from the perspective of someone who does have a chronically ill pet. And I love Casper to tears, but my God, is he sick all the time. And it has made me so keenly aware of what goes on in the pet world and what to give them, what not to give them and up and coming things. So finding out there was a whole part of the like pet world that was MLMs was just eye opening and wild to me. And I know I barely scratched the surface, but I just wanted to give you a taste of it anyway. But with that being said, that's where we're ending today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you learned something new. And if you did, make sure you're liking, following, and subscribing so that you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to be here with me. I hope you had a fantastic holiday weekend and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.